Hey everybody, Dave Isaacs here with you for jamplay.com. And in this lesson, we're gonna look at working with rhythm, specifically working with the pulse and how you use it when you're playing lead guitar. Now, of course, virtually all music you play has a pulse. And just to get clear on the terms, when I use the word pulse, what I mean is simply the steady beat. Think of the pulse as a tool of measurement. Yes, it keeps your tempo steady, but it's also simply establishing a timeline. Now, once we've established that steady beat, we need to put numbers on that ruler. We're gonna do that with meter. That's a count of four, count of three, count of two. You may know the term time signature. That just means that we're gonna take those pulses and group them in twos, threes, or fours, or fives, sixes, whatever, depending on what the music calls for. The idea is that when you're improvising, you are coming up with your own combinations of notes that are going to work with or against the pulse. There's only really a few things that you can do. You can group pulses together, as we do to create meter, counts of four, or we can subdivide them. One, two, three, four, becomes one, two, three, four, eight notes, or one, two, three, four, and all the different ways that we can do that, mixing and matching. When you play a musical phrase, it's going to line up with that pulse in one way or another. Unless you're specifically trying to play out of time, which is a technique that we'll explore in the lesson on free improvisation way down the road. Don't worry, we're not gonna get there for a while. But when you're playing a melody of any kind, whether it's composed or improvised, you are working with that pulse in the sense that you are either going to line up with the beats, with the marks on the ruler, or you're going to fall somewhere in between them. And sometimes we specifically stay on the beat with the pulses. One, two, three, four. Sometimes we intentionally play off the beat between the pulses. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And of course, making real music, things are going to change up. There's going to be more patterns than that most of the time. The idea is for you to learn to work with that pulse. And so the first thing you wanna be able to do is just to improvise rhythmically. And I should say, I'm gonna use that word a lot through this course. Don't be thrown off by it. It sounds like a fancy musical word. It just means making it up as you go. It means doing something when you don't know exactly what's going to happen. And truthfully, if you wanna be a good lead guitar player, I really think it's an essential skill. Not everybody might agree with that. There are great players that really don't improvise. They compose and they play the parts as they're composed. But if you think about it, writing music, composition, is improvisation in slow motion over a long period of time. The ideas have to come from somewhere and then you work with them. By the same token, improvisation is really spontaneous composition. You're making up the music as you go. This idea of being comfortable with not knowing what's gonna happen next is huge. And we're gonna come back to this again and again throughout this course. If you do find that that's challenging to do, then you can start by simply organizing things. Let's say you start with the beat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a backing track here, and I'm just going to play different rhythms against that backing track on the same note to start with. Check it out. So we're gonna start with whole notes four counts on each note. Now, this is an exercise in keeping time. Some of you were saying, I already know how to do this. That's great, do it anyway, it's good practice. Like so, one. Just feel that pocket, locking in with it. Half notes. Obviously, no song is going to have the same rhythmic value all the way through. Half and quarter. One, two, three, four. How about this? One, two, three, four. Which is really one, two, and one. Four. One, two, three, four. Even if 
I just do that with a couple of different notes, we get some music. One. By adding eight notes, things get more interesting. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three. One, two, and three. I'm working with a tiny little box here, fifth and seventh frets of the D and G strings. It's a piece of an A minor pentatonic. Three notes. Consciously combining note values. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One, two, three, four, and one and two and three and four. The beauty of it is, is that you get to music very, very, very quickly. And you see, I was using three different notes: a G, an A, and a C. Now, in subsequent exercises, I'm going to give you particular licks with particular rhythms to play. But with this one, I want you to start off doing exactly what I just did. Put on the track and play just a handful of notes. Maybe you just mark out three or two or four, not more than that, for sure. And just experiment with whole notes, half notes, mixing half and quarter, quarter and eighth. Just get in the habit of being able to make some kind of statement in time. Some of you may find that challenging. So a good exercise you can do is actually step away from your guitar for a moment. You can just use your voice to articulate the beat. Also helps to move with it a little bit. When you feel the beat in your body, it's not just about your ears anymore. So you could start off ba, ba, ba. Start mixing it up, even if suddenly you're going ba 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 ba. If you find that hard to do, then the skill that you need to practice is being able to simply decide to make sounds with a beat. And all you're doing is you're finding that pulse, you match up with it, and then the decision every time is, do I make another sound or not? Either you're going to wait, or you're going to do something else. And then the question becomes, how long am I going to wait, or how long do I wait before I do something else? That's it. If you have to be deliberate about it and work through all the different permutations, some of you may need to do that, that's fine. Even if you need to sit down and write out on the beat four counts, breaking up the beat, eight notes, one and two and three and four and, and then all the different combinations. Most of you won't need to be quite that mathematical about it to start to get the hang of it. And don't feel self-conscious about it, you're just exploring. This is something that when you were a little kid, you probably would have done very naturally. It's worth keeping in mind that approaching this with a little kid's mindset is really helpful because you're just learning to explore. The whole idea is that it's new territory, it's uncharted territory, you don't know what's gonna happen next but we need that rhythm foundation to be able to make any kind of good music, improvising or composing a good melody. So work with this, work with that track, and in the next lesson, we're gonna take this a step further.